Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, what I'd like to do is add in one more thing to our Tic-Tac-Toe board app, and that's the winning line that should be drawn when a user wins the game. So for example, X won this game here, and what should have happened is a horizontal line in row two should have been drawn in, connecting these three markers here. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to have to get done is creating a few methods that can draw in our horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines. Just like we created these two methods here, the draw X and the draw O, which is able to draw those two markers for us. So we're gonna be creating a few methods that are gonna do the same thing. They're gonna work on the same principles. So the first method that I'd like to do is creating the draw horizontal method. This is what's gonna be drawing in our horizontal lines. So we could type in private void, draw horizontal line, and then this method is gonna take in three arguments. The canvas, I'm gonna call it canvas, and then it's gonna take in two integer values, the row and column. And then within here, all we have to do is type in canvas.drawLine, and then we're gonna pass in those five arguments again, the start X and Y, along with the stop X and Y, and finally our paint. So we're gonna start this line at whatever column was passed into our method, followed by the row times our cell size, plus a cell size divided by two, and I'll explain why we're doing this in just a second. And then our stop X is gonna be our cell size times three, followed by our row times our cell size. And again, we're gonna tack on that extra cell size divided by two. And finally, don't forget to throw in your paint that we created. So this bit of code should be able to draw in our horizontal lines for us. But what exactly is happening? So if I bring up our emulator, this is the game that I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So in this example, we would want a horizontal line to be drawn in row two. So what exactly is gonna be passed into our method here, the draw horizontal line? Well, for one, our canvas. So this is actually the game board or the view that we created. Then we're gonna to have to pass in the row and column that we need this line to be drawn on. Now, don't forget the row and column has to be an index value. So in this case, it would be row one. So we'd pass in a one for row and a zero for our column because we want it to start on this column here towards the far left. So we would pass in a column of zero, which would be our starting X, followed by our row times whatever cell size we need, plus our cell size divided by two. Now, where does that bit get us? Now, if we just left it as row times cell size, it would get us to this point right here, flush with the line that actually makes up our tic-tac-toe board. Now, this is why we need to tack on that cell size divided by two, because it's gonna get us right in the middle of this box here. And then all we're doing for our stop X is taking whatever our cell size is, which is the area of this one box here, and multiplying it by three to get us to the very end. And then finally, our stop Y also has to do the row times our cell size, plus a cell size divided by two to get us in the middle of that cell there. Now, if that was confusing, leave a comment down below and I can explain it for you a little bit differently, but we're gonna go ahead and create the draw horizontal line method next. So we'll come down here, same thing, private void draw vertical line this time. And again, we're gonna pass in our canvas, call it canvas, those two integer values, the row and column. And then again, we're gonna do a canvas.drawLine. And this one's gonna start at the column times our cell size, plus our cell size divided by two and then our row for our starting Y, and then for our ending point, it's gonna be our column times the cell size, plus our extra cell size divided by two, and then finally our cell size times three. Don't forget we need to add in our paint as well, and this bit of code should be able to draw in our vertical lines, and it's working on the same principles as the horizontal line method. Now let's come just below here and we can create two more methods that could draw in our negative sloping diagonal line and the positive sloping diagonal line. So let's start off by writing the code that's gonna draw on that positive sloping diagonal line. I'm gonna type in private void, and then I'm gonna call this method draw diagonal line positive. And again, it's just gonna take in our canvas followed by our row and column. So then to draw on our positive sloping diagonal line, it's a little bit easier. We can type in canvas.drawLine. So it's gonna start at zero comma our cell size times three, and then it's gonna end at our cell size times three comma zero. And then don't forget we have to pass in our paint. And then I'm gonna copy this code here, paste it just below it, and instead of calling it draw diagonal line positive, I'm gonna call it draw diagonal line negative. And then this one's gonna change up just a little bit. We're gonna change our starting X and Y to be zero, zero, and the stop X and stop Y is gonna be our cell size times three. And I made a slight mistake. We don't need our rows and columns for our diagonal line. So I'm just gonna remove those 
And then these two methods here should be able to draw in our diagonal lines. And this method should be able to draw in our vertical lines and this one for our horizontal lines. Okay, so taking a look at our draw horizontal and draw vertical line methods, if you take a look here at our cell size divided by two, we have a warning. If you wanted to get rid of this, all you have to do is cast a float to it and then those warnings should go away. So now that we have our four methods created that can draw in our winning lines, what do we have to do now? Well, actually we have to come over to our game logic class and within here, when we have a winner, we need to figure out how we could send some data over to our tic-tac-toe board to let our view know where to draw on the winning line. And we could do this within our winner check method. Now, before we go ahead and add some code to that method, we need to create an int array. So let's type in private int, make it into an array, and we're gonna call it win type. And then I'm gonna give it a default value of negative one, negative one, negative one. So what is this win type array gonna do for us? Well, we're gonna say the first element is going to store our row. The second element is going to store our columns. And the third element is going to store the line type. So now that we have this array defined, let's actually create a getter for it. So when we're updating our tic-tac-toe board, we can actually check to see where we need to draw the line, assuming we have a winner. So let's do that just below here, past our git player. We can type in public git win type and then Android Studio can create this getter for us. And let's come up to our game logic, the winner check method, and we can actually add in some code and change the elements within our win type array to let our tic-tac-toe board know where to draw in our winning lines. So let's say, for example, this horizontal check here, so this is our rows, happens to come back as true. So there was a winner and it needs to draw in a horizontal line. What do we need to do? We need to come into here and type in winning type, set that equal to a new int array, and then we're gonna give it a value of whatever row we're in, followed by a zero, and then a win type of one. So we're gonna designate horizontal as being a win type of one, vertical as two, and then our diagonals will either be three or four, depending on whether or not we need a positive or negative sloping diagonal line. So let's take a look at just the horizontal case to kind of clear things up a little bit, because I'm sure it's a little confusing. So we have our win type, and let's say, for example, we have this winning case here. So what's gonna happen? Our winner check is gonna run this for loop, and it's gonna find that we have a winner in the horizontal position. Then it's gonna come in here and set whatever row that winning spot happens to be in. So in this case, it would be a one, followed by a zero, because that's where we need to start that line in the first column here, followed by the win type. Now we're gonna use that to figure out which method we need to call, either the draw horizontal, vertical, or diagonal method to draw on that line. So I'm gonna go ahead into all of our horizontal, vertical, and diagonal checks and add in the correct win type, and then I'll come back and show you guys what I did. Okay, so I went ahead and got that all done. For our vertical check, we're gonna have that designated as a win type of two, so it's our third element in our int array, this one right here. Then we're gonna pass in the row, so it's gonna be hard-coded as a zero, because that's where we need to start our line, followed by whatever column the win happened to be in. And then for our negative diagonal check, we're gonna denote that as a win type of three, and then our positive diagonal check is gonna be a win type of four. And just in case you were curious as to why I passed in a zero and a two for our negative diagonal check, the reason for this is because if you think about it, we need to start at row zero. So this first row right here, it would be this box followed by the last column. So this one right here. So it's gonna draw a line from this box to this box. And then for our positive diagonal check, we're gonna pass in a row of two and a column of two, which is our very last lines. So in this case, the row of two would be the very last one here. So essentially this box. And then our last column would be this one. So it would be this box here. Okay, so if that's still confusing, I think after we create the draw winning line method, it'll clear things up quite a bit. So let's go ahead, come back into our tic-tac-toe board.java. This is where we created our tic-tac-toe view. And let's come just below where we defined our new draw methods. And we can type in private void. And let's call it draw winning line. And then this is just going to take in a canvas. And I'll call it canvas. So what we need to do in our draw winning line method is extract the row and column from our win type array. So when we have a winner, we're going to assign a row and column here and then extract it out into our draw winning line variable and figure out which type of line we need to draw. So let's extract the row and column and store them in a variable. So we can type an int row, set that equal to a game.getWinType. 
And then we just want the first element there because if you remember in our game logic, if we come up here, we define the first element in our win type as the row. And then we're gonna need the column, which is gonna be our second element. So if we come back, we can copy this line, paste it just below it, change it from row to column. And then our column is the second element in our win type array. So by changing this to a one, we should be able to extract out the column and store it into this variable here. Now let's switch over the game dot get win type and then the final element in our int array which is the type of line that needs to be drawn so in the case that it's a one so a horizontal line we need to draw a horizontal line pass in the canvas along with the row and column that we extracted from our win type and then we can break out of this case here and then we can create a new one so in the case that it's a two a vertical line we can draw in our vertical line, pass in our canvas along with the row and column that we extracted. Don't forget to break out of this. And then we can create a case three, which is our negative diagonal line. We have a win type of three. So if that's the case, we need to draw in our negative diagonal line. And then remember, we just need to pass in our canvas for this one, break out of here. And then finally, in the case that we have a four in our third position of the win type, we need to draw in our positive diagonal line pass in our canvas, and then break out of this. All right, so now that we have our draw winning line method created, let's actually come up to our on draw and add that in there. So once we find our on draw, what we need to do is make sure that we actually need to draw in the winning line. So we could type in if the winning line, so it comes back as true and we actually have a winner, then what we need to do is draw in the winning line pass in our canvas, but don't forget, we never set up our paint in any of the draw horizontal or vertical methods. So let's type in paint.setColor, and then we're just gonna set that to our winning line color, the attribute that we extracted from our XML. Okay, so now this bit of code here should draw on the winning line when we actually have a winner, but I'd like to do a broad overview of what's happening when the user actually places in the final marker. So for example, this game right here, the one that we saw at the beginning of this video, what happened when the user finally placed in the last X marker to win the game? So they're gonna click this spot here and our view is gonna register an on touch event. So it's gonna run into our on touch event method, come in here, extract out the row and column, and then finally it's gonna hit this if statement here. As long as there's not a winning line, this is what's preventing the user from tapping on our tic-tac-toe board to place some more markers even after we have a winner. So if that's not the case, which it is for here, it's gonna come into this if statement here and make sure that the rowing column that the user wants to place a new marker in is actually valid. So it's a zero, meaning empty, in our 2D array. So if that's the case, it's gonna update our game board. So it's gonna draw in that marker and then it's gonna to check to see whether or not we have a winner. So our game.winner check. Now, once it comes in here, it's gonna determine whether or not we have a winner, right? And then if we do have a winner, Remember we have our win type array, which is gonna store in the row and column of the win along with the win type. Then with these three values, we can use that to determine which method we need to call to draw on the correct line. So for a horizontal example here, this row and column that would be assigned to our win type would be a row of one because it's the index value, followed by a zero in the column. And since we assigned one as being the horizontal win type, we're gonna pass in a one. Then after this, we're going to set our winning line to true and then call our on draw method again. So we're gonna pop up back in here. And now once we get to the end of this line, remember our winning line is true now. And then we're gonna draw in our winning line, which extracts out the win type and kind of sets up those four methods to pass in the row and column of where the line needs to be drawn. Okay, so I hope that made sense. If it didn't, please leave a comment down below and I can explain it for you a little bit differently. But now what I'd like to do is come over to our game display.xml file and let's actually define what color our winning line is gonna be. So let's come down to our tic-tac-toe board tag and then where we defined our X and O color, we could type in custom colon winning line color. Cause if you remember in our adders file, we defined it as winning line color. So come back here and I'm gonna give it a value of green. So now that I defined the winning line color as green, let's go up to the far right, click the play button to test our app on the emulator. I'm gonna click play, give our names as Jason and Bobby again, and then we'll submit the names. And now I'm gonna make O win this time. And then you can see Bobby won and our green winning line is drawn in. All right, so it looks like that's it for the tic-tac-toe game series. 
If you guys have any apps that you guys would like to see me create, and I mean like basic app suggestions, nothing too crazy, or maybe you have an Android topic that you'd like to see me cover, let me know down in the comments below. And I do know this video was a little confusing, so don't hesitate to leave a comment down below with any questions that you might have. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.